Unmuting all the things. I think we're live. Ooh, so I'm watching, pretty. Look at this. I'm watching the things tick here. Sound sound looks good. Yep, I think we're live. We're live. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Hi. us for what is episode three of our newly titled uh, Running Feywild? Running Wild? We, we were, we're still ironing out, I think, some of the... Oh, I I can't remember. Into the wild? I, I, oh, God. I, it's running, running wild is what we picked, but we thought oh. about maybe adding the fey in there. So um, this is our, <laughs> you know, we're just kind of, we're making this up as we go. This is our um, our after show kind of recap, talk about the game, talk about DMing and playing kind of as a whole and how that affects the game and and uh, just kind of hanging out and talking D&D &D, kind of low pressure for a little while. Um I am Jared Pace. I am a player, Quinn, an elf ranger in the show. I am joined um, by the wonderful Taylor, uh, uh, playing Esmeralda, an Eladrin sorcerer, and James, play DM. James, I almost put human question mark uh, underneath your uh, underneath you your name to give you yeah. to give you like uh, yeah, like give you like a class and in, uh, in a character. So you should toy with that later on. You know, we can put. Hello, my kids are my half elf. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh yeah so wow okay i'm hosting now so i gotta kind of shift now into the hosting mindset um where we last left off uh or i guess where we last played we had kind of been dealing with the repercussions of this 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 botched confirmation um <laughs> in which uh our our cleric tisme was like basically coaxed to a different uh, path than perhaps she intended or at least thought she was on and from that came these like uh, these fey creatures trying to capture her and take her to this this apparently famous hag in the area um, and then the four of us rallying to to stop this this kidnapping and uh, successful for the most part uh, the, the the guy orchestrating all this what what was his uh what was his uh creature again uh, james oh the C celine uh something like that the saloon this yeah. kind of this crazy antennae insect looking yeah fey dude yeah yeah it's one yeah, of the get... press monsters he's, he's nice yeah he gets away um and then we're all kind of like dealing with the aftermath of 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 uh, i mean just pick one right like tisme is now she's like i don't know she's got some deformations going on like horns and 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 yep. and and glossed over eyes i'm not going to say the m word um <laughs> we've got esmeralda uh you know revealing that she's got some magical prowess uh and 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 joining the fray and then we've got of course eric our cobalt artificer pulling out i don't know three four five guns how many guns did he have you know like our machines tucked under his his uh his belt there and then that's episode two and then episode three we're like okay now play <laughs> so um i guess you know taylor tell me like what like what are your thoughts kind of uh what were your what were your thoughts going into this episode with how you thought you might have to react with the town or with um the army or with the other characters i was a hundred percent expecting as well to have to pull out of there because the uh, little creature loudly declared she was supposed to record and i remember seeing what happened going oh no you had to yell in front of these guys uh but thankfully she was able to leave with disney and a fairly calm fashion uh i think throwing esmeralda out on her own would just be a recipe for disaster she's not ready for that uh yeah i think part of the challenge is is you know we had multiple unveilings and so when you're trying to work out what the npc reaction is going to be you kind of got to put it in some kind of hierarchy where you go oh, uh, okay uh quinn's throwing daggers that seem to be magically augmented uh, okay that's not that big all right we've now got a cobalt with machinery and robots and, <laughs> and that kind of stuff that's significant but for the army perhaps not so much then you go all right we've got a fey doing wizardry and, and that kind of stuff okay but they're here to find fey magic so but now we've got this what seemingly looking evil looking creature with the horns sprouting and eyes and doing really full-on magics you know that inflict wounds and then the the, the, the 
you know, they're, they're the tasha's laughter. And, yeah, it's look at nasty stuff. So for me, the soldiers were locked on Kismay. That that looks to be the bad one to me. Let's let's go with her. So that so that kind of I think that let Esmeralda off the hook a bit for mm -hmm. that for that session. But they'll remember. There's no question they'll remember. Yeah, and she was aided by that that redhead elf mm. woman. <laughs> Let's get her to kind of fire. Yeah. And that was kind of, I think, Quinn's thought process. So like, I honestly, like, as a player, I didn't even know how to deal with everything, right? Because there's this, there's this clearly chaotic moment, right? You're not going to play detective. Like, like, how do you use magic and what's going on? Like, there's just chaos going on. Yep. So, so there was a moment where I remember like Eric looking and saying like, I, at, at this point, Esmeralda and Tisme had ran, I think, with uh, the father to like go to his house to gather some things and then go to the mill. Um, and and um, Bisbo's like, do you want to follow? And in my head, I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I think we kind of have to do army things right now and deal with, like, the army here. Um, and, of course, you know, in my mind, I'm like, all right, well, we've got a little reprieve. We've got a break before we're going to have to, like, continue this, like, story going on. And then, lo and behold, there's combat waiting, you know, at the mill house. Um, and, and Esmeralda, uh, Taylor, you're, at this point, like, are you depleted completely or do you had like i had one spell left and i used it that night um yeah. and it's based, yeah it's it was, depleted i think it is it was depleted like i at that point i had been in four fights yes that's right yeah it's correct because you had that entry like uh pre uh exodus from the feywild fight what was your hit points because i remember you took a blow and you went down and i thought to myself that was only like I, six points. At, when I went to the portal, I had six out of 18. And then I hit into the area where Tisme was. The battle started again. I was low. I did not have full HP until we got into the town. Um, and then we had that battle with the the little monster fae. And then again with the Kikimora. Um, <laughs> at that point, I'm like, uh, I would not sort of like my level six like a level six doors are going to have to be a little bit difficulty with this funny fight so yeah and you you've got me to burn a lot of sorcery points Jane. yeah that's yeah well it was the you know it's your first day in the mortal realms you want to make it memorable like dear diary <laughs> yes. Yes. dear diary i'm traumatizing the poor thing i almost had to become a different person uh, what's, I must what's admit, a, I did feel a little guilty at the end of that session, or late, later that night. I went, oh, actually, yeah, that was did you, fights. That was one. Of, yeah, sorry, Esmeralda. That was probably. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we'll get to we'll get to that moment in a second. Um, <laughs> what uh, I remember is, I think it was the second episode. What what's your like? What sorcerer uh, abilities do you have? Right, like what's um what's your Sorcery, what can you use your sorcery points on, I guess I should say? Or you don't have to tell me all of them, uh, just whichever ones you think you use. Uh, quickening, maybe? I remember quickening, quickening, uh, quick, uh, quicken and careful, which is really important uh, yeah. for... What was the second one? Want things careful. Right. Uh, careful. Careful. Casting. Okay. Oh, yeah. And um, you also have, apparently, so you had some other ability where you could sacrifice a spell for more sorcery points. Is that inherent to sorcerers? I've never played a sorcerer myself, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can burn a spell slot to get sorcery points. Or, 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 um, or the other way around. So you can burn a source oh, you can. Get a spell slot. Yeah, so they're, they're interchangeable. Yeah. And, and I've, I've never, I've, I, this is strange. And now that I think about it, I've never played with a sorcerer that's had quickening before. It's, um, when I was thinking about it, I'm like, that's really cool. But like most it seems like do, a pretty, pretty good spell. I mean, like, you know, because most people could... pick twinned and careful. Okay. Uh, is, is kind of what they do because they want to do they want to hit you know multiple targets and they want to make sure that their, their friends don't get smashed by their fireballs but um i, I love it that, that whole changing of an action spell to a bonus action brilliant really good well while i was like oh like i know the 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 quicken magic missile was very very dangerous in my head i actually planned that for like the cure wounds that i have where i was like okay i can do cure wounds as a bonus and then still attack and then it went off somewhere else <laughs> So, yes. uh, <laughs> no regrets yes. there at all, I'm sure. Yeah. So, uh, well, and so, well, yeah, okay, I won't spoil that. So, we'll, we'll continue to press forward. So, um, so we get Latrini and Tismay to the parents' house, correct? Uh, back to her home. And then, uh, she's visited by another fake creature very quickly. And this is kind of to my point. I was not expecting to have to, like, 
continue to follow Tisme and the Trini to be like to be a group. Like there's a dynamic, you know, you wanna you wanna give people their space, but also like you don't want to like split the party, right? Like that's the that's the thing that I think, you know, everyone's kind of conscious about. And we of course we split the party like right away. Um, because I wanted to talk with the uh, with the with the army and basically get you know berated by the the sergeant there um so james like what are you thinking when like you see this opportunity do you think you have to slow play it or are you kind of like this is a this is a cool moment where i can create some tension that maybe you hadn't planned before or did you always kind of think they'd split uh no i never thought you'd split i, I thought for sure that you two would follow the the others that you know that there's that there's that kind of social contract that you buy that players buy in um but then you you've got to have an overlay by your character you know that yeah absolutely you know quinn would chat with the soldiers you'd work out what was going on you would use that lull in the in the excitement but uh for me there was a couple of complications i had tisme who we'd already worked through that that she had no gear. She'd left all the gear at home and was in her kind of ceremonial robes in the middle of town. And I thought, if you guys do a runner out of the forest and run from town right now, I've got Tisme with nothing. And, and for Latrini as a player, it's kind of like, yeah, that's a bit rough. So that's why I went, okay, let's get mum and dad to kind of grab her and run home to, you know, yeah, you know, and that secret run out the back door, we'll cover you kind of vibe from that. And I did expect that you guys would follow, that you would, that, you know, that the hound would get in and you'd be tracking this down and we've got to get onto this fay. When you didn't, that was really interesting. There's, I'm thinking, yeah, that, that works, that's okay. But that also went, okay, well, I get to do a bit of role play and we get to do a few of the repercussions. I get to use Romany, uh, not Romany, uh, Romilly to have a chat with, with the girls. I, I get uh, the sergeant who's gruff, I get to play him again with the boys because, you know, these are big characters and I want to, I want to give them a bit of time. But then I also want to get you guys out of town. You know, I don't want I don't want this to be a soldier's searching room for room. I don't want this to drag on for too long. So I went, oh, I might just attack the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 take all your anger out on the bakery. Well, thank God the village isn't very big because uh, yeah, like there, there was a moment. Of course, you know, so you step away from Quinn and Bisbo, and then Tismay and Taylor. You guys are are now being put to sleep and thank god you resisted that like how close are we to who was it that was like was it taylor almost being put to sleep yeah no i can't be put to sleep no she can't because she's an elf oh okay i thought i thought they hit oh yeah that's right that's exactly right yeah so so it was latrini that that could have been um and but she passed her saving throw so so that's what couldn't and latrini passed so it, it meant but of course the the other guys no gone the, the the family the mother the father the sister yeah, just so, dropped. yep just dropped and that spell starts at the lowest hit points right and then it works its way up isn't that the magic that it does yeah normally you roll 5d8 for the sleep spell and then you take the hit points off and of course with low level commoners they're all got like three four five they're dropping right away so, yeah, yeah. so we're yeah we're watching this happen as players and our characters no clue what's going on and then thankfully like uh Bisbo has uh, some. What is it? A, a flying frog? What is it? like? What is it? Seriously, it's a a hovering. It's a, it's, it's a mechanical tele, uh, helicopter spider. Of course, of course. It's a it fake campaign. Why wouldn't you have a mechanical clockwork it's helicopter it's spider going around? Lines right up with everything I knew Eric could do with a character <laughs> creation. Um, <laughs> he's able to say I, I love what Eric's doing. You know, like every oh, awesome. single thing that he's adding to this character is, is artificer slash kobold related. You know, he's he's looking at every spell that he's got access to and really putting some wonderful clockwork flavor into everything. It's, it's great. Yeah. Um, it's confusing the hell out of me because, he, of course, he's renamed everything on Fantasy Ground. So in, every time in he your clicks system, something, I go, yeah. what the hell is that? Like, oh, it's Firebolt. Okay, well, now, okay, now I understand the mechanics of what it is because i'm spending half the time clicking buttons trying to figure out what it is he's actually doing as opposed to what his character's saying he's doing i pull out my boomstick yeah great what the hell does that mean you know yeah he's got some spinning shotgun it's it's, it's something and so he's able to send the spider we're able to figure out something is wrong and then to like probably one of my favorite moments is just a roll both nat 20s on that yeah. initiative to get there in time which i feel like was just Felt, it just felt good, you know? Like, it's one of those things that you can't create. Like, it's just luck of the roll. Fighting the 20s were, were wonderful that, yeah. in that last episode. That was so good. That was so clutch in the start and the end of that fight. It was really, really good. No, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, that's right. I, I totally forgot about that. So we get to the fight, and what is this creature now? Like what? Unless you don't want to spoil anything for your players. Oh no, I'm, what, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Kikamora. Kika, yeah, Kika. the Kikamora. That's right. So Kikamora is a again a fantastic Cobalt Press um, Cobalt Press monster. They're they're pretty challenging. No, they're not. Could be sponsored by. Okay. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll see. Um, <laughs> uh, and what I loved about them is that they they haunt houses. They find little nooks in shadows, and they dwell there. And effectively, they 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 emerge from the shadow itself. So they're very nasty shadow fae kind of creatures. They um, and they affect people's dreams. And for me, if I was to think about something that would scout ahead and be part of a village for a bit of time and just slowly do this kind of temptation or change or corruption of a place. The idea is you've got this kind of scavenging, almost vulture-like bird living in your attic in, a, in, a, in, a, in the bakery of a town just slowly kind of corrupting influence around the town and identifying the baby that could be um, abducted to turn into a hag and uh, identifying the baker's daughter that can be corrupted and turned into a hag and just be there for a period of time i, I as soon as i saw it i went yeah this is this is what i want here this is kind of backstory and of course for for uh, you guys uh, not taylor but for the, the other guys when we did our little one shot this is this is kind of the creature that have been orchestrating something before the game so um and the idea of this nasty black bleak carnivorous bird that has pure white swan feathers as its kind of collected trophies is kind of this other kind of weird thing that this yeah that's that's kind of cool i like that there's there's layers there's layers there and taylor are you you're not aware that he's even up there and tismay's having this conversation for a while right like aren't you that you're down with the well, parents so as esmeralda no as taylor i'm freaking yeah, out so right like, <laughs> that's a kikimora can you get yeah. away from her wait james did you make it is was that kikimora female or did you flip that role I flipped it a bit, yeah, yeah. Nice, so, nice, nice. You guys have some background here because you guys are speaking a language that I do not understand. Because Taylor, you're very fond of the Fey world and the Fey and 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 that just whole story and and atmosphere. Um, so so this is a common creature for you that you've had that you've read in other other lore or other games or. So. Interesting enough, the Kikamora isn't a Celtic background, which a lot of the Feywild kind of comes from, but he's Slavic. Yeah. Um, and I remember because in one of my college courses, I took a creative writing class, and I pulled a Kikamora as one of the topics, and then I researched it, and it's terrifying. Um, but it's basically a female spirit that hides in home, and it just basically makes life living hell for young, the young women in the house. Um, but so when I was as, as Esmeralda, I'm, I'm like, basically, um, his mate's been up there for a while, we need to go. And that's when I started coming up, I was trying to help build the tension, but also to keep things moving. Uh, and then that may have triggered that fight a little before she was ready for it. But um, yeah, it was very interesting to see it keep uh, more used that way. Are they normally female? Because you made a, a question about yeah. the sex. So they're normally, they're normally female. female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Kikimora are, are female. And it is, it's very specified because the way they look, they normally have the head covering, the skirt, um, and the shirt. So they're, they usually mm. look like old women. Yep. But I then see. they open their mouths and have horrifying beak and teeth. Nasty stuff. Yeah. The, trick I, the trick I've got is... Um, because I'm using hags, I, I'm, I, I didn't want to overload with too many creepy looking. Women. I was just gonna say that was kind of very haggish. This sort of like, fu- like fake, yeah. Like so, I've got, creature. I've got Tismay transforming into a hag. I've got Amurta as kind of the semi big boss. So for me, the underlings, I wanted to kind of change a bit and make them just because it just spread out. It, it spread out, and you know, and and for me, this kind of matriarchy hag circle that has these, un, these male henchmen working for them kind of works for me and it helps me not have to put on horrendous female voices for 
too much because I'm absolutely butchering this Romilly. I cannot do Mrs. Doubtfire to save myself. I'm finding oh, it's so I've got to do something entirely different. Yeah, but I hope one of the stories of the King Moore that I read was the voice sounded like basically one of the translations was the voice sounded like that of the devil but with the words of a grandmother. So basically, they spoke with soft words but sounded demonic. Oh, so. my grandmother. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's a lovely woman. She's a lovely woman. Um, lovely woman. Lovely woman. Yeah. You can have her by. Yeah. Uh, it, is, uh, it is one of the things I do love. And, and when we when we reached out to try and find players that, to, to play in this game, you know, Taylor's understanding of, of, of fades is awesome. You know, it's um, it's really, really great because I don't have to explain things like the she and, and yeah. you know, and the cappers. And I, I kind of threw a little... A message to her this week. How do you think of Slurer? And just kind of like, we're, it's really great. Some of this law we're oh, getting. Oh, I got that and went, Dang, <laughs> yeah. you better not. Yeah, you better right. give me two sessions before you do that. What a what a, a lucky circumstance. I mean, I we were looking for another player. I had never used Reddit to find players. Right, I'd only ever really used Discord because it's just you know it's easier like chatting. And then, like, you know, the first person that reached out was Taylor. It was like, hey, I'm really interested in this whole scene. And I was like, sure. Like, that's great. Like, come on. Come, yeah, come come, give it a run. And, I, and uh, I loved it because, you know, often as a DM, you've got to do these horrendous law dumps, you know, and it's really tricky to do because you've... Either time you're consuming, you, I think, right? Like, I'm, it took you, what, four weeks to get your law dump to get out there? Yeah, yeah. yeah it took yeah, me forever just, just to get my kind of head into the right <laughs> space about what elements did I want to use and kind of... I put together a bit of a document that, to my players, you guys have known, um, which kind of talked about the history of the land, talks about the different factions, how the themes of the game and what I wanted to run. Um, and of course i'm running some ancient history in this game in terms of old fey packs i'm i'm doing some more recent history of these kind of adventurers that had retired to the village and there's some personalities there some are still living and i'm using that to kind of explain the history you know so you've got you've got npcs here that can engage with players and can tell a bit about their own life that then reflects the the life of the village but having having a player that understands the faith and i can just let taylor just go yep you just talk about it you know I, you, you know what you're talking about i'm, I'm cool yeah. i don't have to correct you here off you go you can talk about the courts i don't need to do this this is it's a it's a joy and it's it, it really is a treasure because it's tricky you know and I, and I give everyone license to talk about their backstory and their own history and i i, I will very very rarely cor correct someone the only reason i correct someone is if it if it undermines the major plot in any way right. like you know it's kind of like right. well all fey can be killed by tickles well how well, well hang on we're just we're just putting it back <laughs> in, you know but, but for the i did read they were highly highly susceptible to uh to cobalt guns. Yeah, so. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that might be true. Uh, but for, and that's but for everything else, I love you. Just run with it. Sorry, go tell it. Yeah, that's the biggest challenge with Esmeralda. Is I have to stop you. Okay, is this Taylor and her obsession with Faye that knows this? Would Esmeralda know that? So that's like I, it's a line that I'm starting to find. But in the first session, I'm like, okay, where where is that line? So now I'm starting to find it. Now I'm more comfortable working. Like, all right, go. Um, I, had a very, I had a very similar experience with Quinn where we started talking about, which we'll get to, like our, our walk to the mill, where you're like, well, what is the kingdom really doing here? And I'm like, mm. well, I know because I read the <laughs> one sheet, you know, that, that James gave me and I had, well, I had a pretty good idea. And I'm like, I don't know that Quinn knows some of these things, though, just because like he's a grunt, like he's a soldier. And he doesn't even think to ask because he wants to be a grunt in a weird way. So like the higher workings of why the kingdom's here and what they're doing is like... He doesn't even process that quite yet um so it's it's, it's an interesting uh dynamic to have to play we've seen two fights now three if you count the uh the just you beating up on on taylor so four if you count you just beating four. up on taylor four. i mean just just absolute oh, just you know sorry. <laughs> just monster um <laughs> And we've seen kind of a big baddie, and then like three kind of smaller uh, um, supporting characters. James, is that a, is that is that like a, is that like a kind of recipe you like, or that it was just happenstance? Like you know, like the Kikamore just happens to generate three kind of smaller baddies, or you, do you is that like? No, is that's, that's an addition. That like yeah, but look, and and the and I've got to say this is a bit of a weakness of fifth edition. The action economy of having four players against one bad guy, particularly at low CRs where they don't have a lot of hit points. 
that Kikamora would have been wasted within a round. Like there's no question, it, it just would take, we wouldn't it wouldn't have lasted. And so, what do you do? You you either increase and make it a much tougher fight um, as, as a much tougher bad guy. But then the risk is is the risk of a, a single attack if it's a natural twenty, just taking someone out is yeah. really it's actually quite common you know if i threw a cr5 or a cr6 character a creature against you guys and i rolled a natural 20 it, it's got a potential to literally kill someone in a, in a shot like actually which, like triple their hp and that character is instantaneously and, dead and, they, and they're gone yeah so so it's like the polarity so you're trying to balance the polarity versus like still having something for them else to hit besides this character Yep, that's it. And then and, and still making it challenging. So you've got either you one-shot the boss or the boss one-shots you. How do you find the mix? Well, you throw in other minions. You throw in other little bits and pieces. So often uh, creatures will summon other creatures. There'll be, you know, so I had the little boggles to start with, trying to drag Taylor while the big guy is, is laying waste to the village. Um, you know, for this one, the, 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 the eggs themselves are actually, these creatures are from... And, uh, the item so the item is the egg that then spawns these in these little these little magical servants and i won't spoil what happens when they actually hatch and come under your control but for me the i needed something more for the kikamora to do the sleep once it hit off was great it was going to do some damage and was going to kind of make people fearful and all that kind of stuff but i just needed other little annoying things to tie up the combat and unfortunately, the little annoying things tied up Taylor very badly. I was like, ooh, that's 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 not cool. Because they didn't swing for, I feel like they didn't swing for a round. And so we didn't really know. Like, you don't really know, Taylor, like what they can do. One cast silence, which really just middle fingers yeah. on everyone, right? Which oh, is just... it, was, it was just basically like a, an instant F you to any spellcaster in the area. And I was like, which we all are. Which we all are at least pseudo spellcasters in some way, shape, or form. I looked at my list all verbal like i think there's not a one non-verbal one that i didn't have on there i had the non-verbal to help his main get out of her grasp yeah. that was like the yeah. only non-verbal spell that i had and i was like okay this is not verbal but <laughs> yeah um and then uh and then they strike and i think one hits me and it might have even had i don't think it was a natural 20. No, was I like, was the one that got hit with the natural 20. You got hit yeah. by the natural 20. I got hit. It was like 12 or 13 20. points of damage. Yeah, and, you it know, was big. Yeah. And I was, you know, level three. I'm like, that's half my health more, three quarters of my health. And I'm like, oh, okay, like this is problematic. Like I can't just like run around and like be, like I like, I like to position myself to be a shield sometimes for like, like even if you could run and run past me, like at least I get a swing, but I can block that kind of like avenue to Taylor, avenue to Tismay, although Tismay can probably handle herself better than Quinn can. Yeah. Um, Yes, and I thought can. to myself, I, I think thanks. <laughs> I thought to myself, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can, you know, position myself in this fight anymore. And then Taylor goes down. So let's talk about this moment because I don't know, James. I don't know if you intended the math to line up the way it did, right? But, but you, uh, Taylor goes down, and a creature attacks her directly. Um, and if this creature connects, right, like regardless, it does two two immediate failed death saving throws right and then yes. taylor's turn is immediately after and she's got a roll which, which was the bit i may have not noticed yeah <laughs> okay so that's that's what, <laughs> that's kind of what i suspected because in my head i was like i so what what really happens i don't know we can spoil it or not i guess we'll just spoil it you know yeah yeah, yeah. For the, this is for the, the post show we can do that yeah. yeah uh you know the creature misses with advantage with advantage tag yeah against taylor which is like I don't even care if you fudge the dice. I'm, a, you know, I don't think you did because you're nope. rolling automatic stuff in, and, and we would know, right? Per yeah. you know, yeah. Fantasy, fantasy ground grounds. says it says miss or hit or it, yeah. it, it lets you guys know. And I'm rolling yeah. the dice and they've gone across and the they screen and both it says miss. miss. Um, and so Taylor doesn't take two death savings throws. She had already passed one, so she had one success. Yep. And then the next one is an immediate failure, and that's when like. I felt like as a team, we caught, we all were like, kind of kept going, oh. kind of kept going. But I did the math, and I was like, that she could have been her death. Literally, <laughs> almost died, right? Yeah. And then, of course, you yeah. know, Taylor, what, how are you feeling as this person you wrote nine pages of backstory for? <laughs> um, I was stressed. I won't lie, I was really stressed out. So just like, okay, um, you know, like she has not been able to rest, catch her breath, do anything, and this poor girl has been. This is the first time she was down, but she'd come close at least three times getting down yeah. before Tismay stepped in or she like, helped herself. 
And I'm just like, oh man, I gotta switch to Sorcerer. And these are close combat, close quarter fights. Every single fight that's happened, uh, it, it has not been in a Sorcerer's favor where she can stay at a distance. Yeah. She's and so there's a couple of, it's just like this so i'm gonna ramble for a second so this is universe of perfect kind of like things that led to this moment right because did you have mage armor on right like isn't that what yeah. essentially saves you because i think one roll is like a 13 or 14 like it's yes. one point under it was it was one point under you. the hit yeah so that's one that's one little bit of fun information a second point of information is when we're doing session zero i think all of us had cure wounds or some sort of healing spell picked and then one by one, we all drop it for these cobalt press spells that we're trying to like get into the game. Yep. And I think t- I think Tismay has a healing spell. You don't anymore, right, Esmeralda? Or you do have cure wounds too? No, I have one. Oh, okay. I, I kept cure wounds. So I'm like, I don't think it's fair for one character to be the heal. Yeah. Uh, the heal source. So I was like, okay, I'll keep cure wounds. So I have those druid spells. You're unconscious, and cure wounds is it verbal? Yep. Yep. And silence is up right now. And so there's just this perfect for- this is perfect storm, you know, of like James clearly just wanted to kill you. Like that's just that's clearly if you like put a all complete that- asshole right now. <laughs> <laughs> but in what is like James I, just I get- went, Nope, no, nope, not dealing with the Disney princess today. Off you go. Bring one of your brothers in. <laughs> <laughs> but in what is I think is just incredibly inherent to like the fun of tabletop like D and D, you don't fucking die. You know, you do survive. We're able to, like, get rid of... Some, once we realize we need silence to, like, do anything, like, to really push this forward. Uh, Eric's got his little uh, mechanical thing just spraying glitter and oil, I think, on every everything. Like, he's just lighting up birds around the room. I'm trying to kill those birds. Silence drops. You get cured. You know, and then we're able to, like, once once the, the pieces start to fall, like, to James's point, I think we have the action economy just to really just decimate this Kikamora. And a very yeah. angry, ferocious Esmeralda that is one her, point of damage with a fireball. Fire <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad about that. I literally looked at my dad and went, why did you do this to me? I had a thematic moment, and then you went, yeah. It is. You almost have to roll and then decide if you need to have a thematic moment, right? <laughs> 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 Uh, but no, it was, it's awesome. And then, uh, and then of course, Eric rolls the final nat 20, right? To, to seal yeah. the deal on this creature. And then maximum um, damage on both dice, which was extraordinary. Like, so rolls so a d10s, there's... rolls a natural 20, and then two 10s on two 10-sided dice. It was, wow. Yeah. Bizzo was like creature. the MVP of that entire fight. Uh, Eric's a great player, like, in terms of both art, like, role-playing and combat. I feel like, and Taylor, I think you're, and James mentioned this to me afterwards, I think you're an incredible combat like player. Is that like something that you enjoy? To, like, what's your? When I talk to you, you you seem more RPG ish. Yeah. Like, you're a combat. Like, you're you're pretty fucking good at combat too. So because I'm used to playing with complete um, selfish jerks, uh, I I <laughs> had to learn how to fill in gaps in combat to where it needs to happen. So when I'm playing with a party, that's all like hey, we have the same goal and we're going to act together. It's very weird to me. I'm used to having to be the one to kind of jump in and pull someone out of a situation because they decided to try to 1v1 a dragon yeah, when sure. you are a sorcerer. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, got... but I, but it, 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 I must admit, I mean, it might just be because I threw four fights at you in three sessions. I'm like, she knows how to do this. I'm, I might just have to up the ante and, you know, let's... <laughs> yeah. It'll be hard hanging it, on by a like, thread. Mm. You, you, you're going to lose your fate encyclopedia and then you're going to have to lure them. So. That is true. And then no, she's right. going to come back uh-huh. She's going to come back as a clockwork like kingdom person yeah, just to piss just, you just, off. Just to uh, screw me over. So, all right, so, so Taylor gets plot armor for at least a few more seconds. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then but poor Tisbe is just, she spent like the past two combat rounds just break and grapple. Like I thought that oh. was just such a, such, a, such a great moment of like, you know, and I don't know if you intended this as much. I'm assuming you did because like everything's trying to grapple her, but yeah, like yeah, there's yeah, just like, they're hurt. just like, like they're just creatures trying to rip her out of this village and take her somewhere. You know, and it's like it, the tension is is super tangible because of that. I feel like you know, and, and it was really cool. It was a really both fights I thought were really cool, back to back and unexpected. And right. the second fight was unexpected for me. I thought we were gonna have this moment of like to Taylor's point of like. Like the Spider-Man meme, where like everyone's pointing at everyone, right? Like three Spider-Mans are pointing to each other, like who's who here? And it's like instead, it was like, all right, we got to fight again, you know. And um, 
Yeah. I, 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 sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog. He's going nuts. I don't know. He's okay. I mean. I he's, he's actually he's, he's actually free postman. <laughs> He's actually the muted. He's like not super loud, and and my you know yeah. I'm maybe the worst audio stream guy ever because clearly I think the audio is good half the time and it's not. But I don't think it's terrible. Um, I was about to say it's gone. Uh, oh, Tismay, yeah. Um, it it was really interesting when Tismay said I'd like to be a Twilight cleric. That's Hexblood, and then I went, all right, you're a Twilight cleric. Let's have a look at who the deities of Twilight are in Midgard, which is the Cobalt Press world. And you go, oh, oh shit, this is like the main deity of the Shadow Court. Okay, all right, so you're, you're following the Dark Queen of Magic and Night. And oh, look, her main priestesses are hags. Okay, I guess that's where we're going with this. So it was, she didn't know as a player, I don't think. Um, I, I swear she stumbled into it when we were talking. She just went, I love that class. I yeah. love this race. We're going to throw totally. it together. It's going to be wonderful. And then when I did a little bit of research on the law within this this realm, within this world setting, I went, oh, my God, this is awesome. This is just great. Yeah. So, of course, if one's going to transform into one, then the deity and all the followers are like, well, you're, you're a hag. You're, you're <laughs> coming to us. Like, of course, that's just what you would be doing. And so I don't think it'll be the last time that crazy evil dark things going to try and kidnap Tismay and join the That's dark side. The only thing we know how to do is just to defend against that. I struggled with Quinn to apply like protection from good and evil like I think three times during this episode right because like A it's verbal so I couldn't I don't believe like during any of the stupid nonsense with silence but then I'm like like things are out like I, if we get attacked again like this is going to be terrible so, like maybe it's like a plot I can just like attach this to her then I'm like I only have one spell slot left, so it's like I feel like you know burning it for a maybe. I was really hesitant, um, but yeah, yeah. The, the tension's been incredible. Um, I want to just quickly go back to me killing Esmeralda or almost killing. <laughs> <laughs> because I do apologize, and I have uh, care apo 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 apology. And I did reach out to Taylor and go, oh, "Sorry, is everything all right?" Like it was kind of you know because it is it is confronting when you're down and you roll death saves and you're like, "Oh shit!" And there's a creature over you that's about to take you, to take you out. <laughs> Right, um, but I, I I will say, and I and and I struggle. I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. I play a lot of D and D with children as well. So the last thing you can do is kill a seven year old. It's just not. You just don't do it. It's just legally, it's 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 gray area. Taylor can tell us about that later. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but uh, but one thing I have noticed after doing ever since lockdown, I think I've done 130 D and D games. So it's been kind of like it's been it's been an Unreal. intensive amount of time, and with a lot of adult players. One thing that I have noticed is this this whack a mole get up get up get up with healing word you knock a cut you knock a player down up they come they go down again up they come like i had a, a, a strad game last week where literally a person because of 10 hit points because of a, an ability was getting up every rounds for nine rounds so it's just kind of like this is getting and it gets a bit drawn out and so one of the things that i've made a, a dm pledge to myself is if it's appropriate and the creature would is a intelligent enough and b would be driven enough they're going to try and finish off a player and so for me a, a failardron who is from the good court that is down at the feet of, a, of an evil shadow fey court you would be opportunity number one why would i attack the this kind of mortal soldier that's that's flashing daggers around while i've got a, a fairy queen at my feet so there 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 is some method to the madness it's not just like <laughs> wait taylor i'm picking on you but um but for me for me i you have to go through that process in an npc's mind where you go right, right. What, what's the priority here what what would i do well i'm st i'm still healthy it looks like the boss is still healthy everyone's still up we're looking okay and i get to peck at the at the at the, at the, at the um at the fairy princess so yeah i'm gonna do that and thankfully in retrospect <laughs> my best which was great so but i think there needs to be a sense of that i think as as you guys emerge into the fey wild there's going to be creatures that will pick and tempt and attack one of you over the other because there's there's that temptation and and i imagine that once the once the mortal 
guys get into the into the Fey Wild once Quinn and and Bisbo get in. Well, who's going to get picked by charm spells? It's not going to be it's not going to be Esmeralda. Who's going to get who's going to get mind controlled? Who's going to get illusionary magic thrown at them? Who's going to get stunned by hypnotic pattern? And it ain't going to be her. So it's kind of I've got to do that dichotomy of, of the different sides of the world to, um, if, to to kind of show each one's strength and weakness. If you look at it narratively, as a, as a person who's spent you know three episodes watching a lot, of, like watching and trying to take a lot of this stuff in, and knows nothing about the Fey. Her brothers warned her that this path you're going down is dangerous and foolish and and you shouldn't do it. You should send me instead. Like, I'm the one who should go and you just dip your toe in and come back. And of course, Esmeralda, like, you know, Taylor, no, uh, that's not how this works, you know, and I can handle this. And then to, to honestly, to see it kind of unfold how it did, it's almost poetic, you know, in, in, in a it way. Was. I, I, I'm sure James planned that. So, you know, let's, you know, I'm sure it was all you know, that, very... That, and I'm, I know when we get, eventually you will be driving everyone into, you know, the fake court, the, the court of roses, and it'll be interesting to see how they react to his thing. Uh, but as well, though, I'd be like, hey, uh, let's not talk about the fact that I was down because you know, killed by one of the birds. Like, let's leave that out of the dinner conversation, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's nothing, Mum. You should have seen what happened at the bakery. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! And just and brother is just glaring, and she's just like, "All right, nice job, well, you guys." Spoiler alert: We're not actually ever going to go in the Feywild in this show. We just use that name to to try to be trendy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, very much looking forward, and it's going to be sooner rather than later, too. Yeah, yeah. Spoiler. But how did it feel when we finally got to catch a breath at the mill? Was that? Was that? Because I know that a lot of my groups are like, finally we get a long rest, or finally we get a short rest. It's kind of like, it's that yeah, big, I mean, big exhale. I don't think I trusted it, Taylor. How did you feel? Uh, you know what? When we were walking and we took that small break, uh, and we ended up having an argument with Esmeralda and Quinn, like I was worried in the back of my mind, like something's coming. Some of the yeah. regiments are gonna be there. Something's coming, and I need, and I need to be ready to just fucking go. And thankfully, it was it was just moments of exposition of kind of showing the difference between an Esmeralda. Uh, and then when, when we got to the mill, I kind of was like, there was a pregnant Melodra, and I was like, all right, I think we're safe. Knock on yeah. wood. I don't think we're going to have monsters thrown at us with the, the heavy pregnant woman in the building. <laughs> Because something was following us. <laughs> James, like, an ar- James is an asshole, but not that big an asshole. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Because uh, um, something was following us, but we never really found out. I'm assuming, did we really find out? It was this just someone else coming, like her husband or her... Romilly arrived pretty soon after, but, okay. whether that, but whether that was what was following you or not is tricky. It's un- so. Undisclosed, yeah. 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 There's, there's always bumps in the night. You have to do bumps in the night in, in this yeah. kind of game. You've got to, you know. It's been nothing but right. bumps, I feel like, with swan feathers placed underneath them. Uh, swamp feathers were fun. I like swamp feathers. That's that's got a, that's got a, a good good sense to it. I think. And, um, what? <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh, that's and, oh, of course, we're we're holding a swan feather that's literally tracking us the entire time. Is, is that yeah. what we find out? Kind of. All right. Like, yeah. Bisbo with his mini gadgets finds out that like this swan feather is something that can be scried upon. And, yes. Um, and, it, and, it's been, and it's been and it's been in Tismay's attic for ages, and Tismay grabbed it and took it with her. <laughs> Uh, it's it's been that, that was wonderful. That was really, really great. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bizzo being Bizzo found a way to mechanically keep that thing as far as possible away from the group. Of course. Because that that was taken care of. I was like, all right, no Bizzo. I was, ex- and, and, I, I was expecting you guys to throw it in the river. Like I thought, oh yeah, I'll just throw it in the river. It'll go downstream. That'll be fine. But no, I, I take my helicopter and I fly it three miles away and drop it <laughs> randomly into the west. It's like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, it's overkill. Like we've had enough of your tomfoolery and yeah, we're not right. taking any chances. <laughs> Dropping so, so that whatever fate it is that is actually scrying on this thing is like, what the fuck? Because it's flying <laughs> over a forest, you know? It goes <laughs> We drop it in the water and like a magic portal opens up, right? Like, you know. Maybe. Well, that or this thing is like, huh, this hag is really prolific. Look at her go. Yeah, that's (laughs) right. We we absolutely, she can fly already. She's only been a a hag for a day. Let's recruit her. (laughs) 
So what's next, Taylor? What's next for the group? We're rested, wiser. We're rested, but we're going into the forest. So I have a feeling that we're going to get sort of the first kind of taste of the Feywilds in the kind of realm aspect that Esmeralda knows. Um, I'm not sure when the outskirts how much of the Feywilds are there and what we can expect. Um, in my head, I, I have a couple of the like the fake creatures that I'm like, okay, those could be out there, throw those. Um, but again, this could be completely. Uh, you 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 do the slew owls at me, and I'm just like, don't dare. You wait. <laughs> those are just stuff of night. Yeah. Um, I'm really torn to Google but, these things, but I don't want to know as a um, good player. Well, here's the thing: you can Google them, but the way that things the game is they're drastically different so like when the kikimura happened um i was like oh that's more to be it. so it ended up being drastically different than what the what i knew that i, I couldn't use my meta knowledge to twist it well like, okay well i know how to fight this thing it was a completely different view i just mm. did the background which is really fun because you know when you know these things going in you're like okay well it takes this from the fun but when you have it put like that you're like okay now we gotta figure out it but still, um, yeah. Well, it's, I'm really excited. Fun, you know, it's um, it, yeah. It, Cobalt Press has a wonderful array of Fey creatures, much more than the, the standard rules. But uh, hopefully, that will change shortly with the new expansion book coming out later in the year. Um, but yeah. so one of the things that I, I've been doing is reskinning creatures too. You, you go, all right, well, uh, that's a beast, or that's an aberration, or let's uh, let's let's change a few stats, turn them Fey. Um, Know, and, and unleash them on you guys. So yeah, there's a there's a rapidly expanding kind of cadre of, of baddies coming that may or may not have names that you might be familiar with, and may or may not have stat blocks you might be familiar with. But it's kind of the fun part of it. Um, yeah, looking forward to into the, into the woods. It's kind of into the forest time. Let's go, let's go and catch up with Romilly's drunken ex husband. Um, I'm looking forward to role playing that guy. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um, and I'm also looking forward to Quinn being thrown into the Fey Wild like full force. He's not getting a starter for us. He's just being thrown into the deep end. It's like the luck up. And uh, <laughs> I feel kind of bad for him. We've have, have we slept yet? I wonder if I wonder if Quinn should cast a tech portal right before he goes to bed. Like that was always his plan. Like always, like you know, at the end of the night, kind of cast his like his planer, like his class ability to like see what's around him and follow the ley lines to like the nearest portal and know kind of where it's at i wonder if there's an opportunity to cast that and see um and just see kind of what in the hell is going on in this area but uh quinn is not ready for anything he's literally just he's literally just you know marching along doing what people tell him and then he meets someone who's you know I feel like in many ways kind of his equal on the other side of the portal um, and um, and that moment yeah, them, with them butting heads I felt like was really something cool that I think will maybe carry forward and he's just yeah. so cute and ignorant and innocent and um, and just flabbergasted by the pure insanity that has surrounded him thus far in his, his first venture out of the kingdom so uh, yeah, he's not ready for anything. <laughs> Yeah, as Esmeralda is basically his antithesis, so it's mm. just this really big, these two, they're these very, I mean, they're probably very similar in their, just how they go about things and, you know, what they want, but because I'm an opposite on the spectrum, they're going to butt heads a lot, and I have a feeling that Esmeralda's not going to be kindly to him, he's <laughs> so used to being treated with respect and, you know, and just being seen as somebody from nobility, that having someone going like, okay, this is your fault, she's like, she, she felt attacked, <laughs> and she was like, okay, hold on, no, I'm the good guy here. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we didn't plan this, we did, We just made our characters, like, yeah. two ends oh. of the spectrum, and they kind of naturally happened, like, which is, I think, is, again, uh, you know, a testament to either James is secretly manipulating things behind the scenes, or just the magic that happens when you play role-playing games, you know, it's just like, you know, sometimes these kind of things kind of naturally fall into place. I, I love it because it's, um, you know, I've got a mirror here for you two. You get to see two sides of, of, of effectively, you're both elvish, you know, but very different elvish. You get ones, you've grown up in very different places. Whereas the other two are, are wild extremities of 
uh, of either the Fae or, or the, the kingdom. You know, you've got someone who's completely kingdomized, is, is, you know, grew up in the, in the slums of the factory areas. Everything's mechanical. You know, there's not a there's not a whimsical, magical thing going on at all with Bisbal. It's all ordered. He makes it. He constructs it. He controls it. That's him. And then you've got Tismay, who's got zero control whatsoever going on with her life at all, because she's just all, magic's happening to her. It's been, like she's got. It's just crazy, you know, and massive, grotesque fey stuff going on. You know, where it's it is the stuff of nightmares. The things that you just is completely chaotic. And then I've got these two, these two guys in the middle that are di diametrically opposite, just kind of having a tiff, you know. It's and I love it. I think I, I can't wait to see it. It's, I, I, I'm not sure if you're siblings or if you're mum and dad or that. Either way, it's, I get that sense that you oh, guys are going to be make, niggling don't each make other us through. Oh, the party mom. Bad idea. <laughs> she does not have the judgment for that, James, and you know that. <laughs> That's right. None, none of you do. None, none of you do. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, the, the the sad thing it's a horrifying thought to leave this probably this show on is it's probably gonna be Bisbo, which is probably <laughs> just not at all the kind of structure that we want. Uh, but I think if, if, if Bisbo is the is the force of water in this game, God help everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and there's something so funny because Bisbo, everything is mechanical with him, but there's a sense of whimsy to how he's designed everything to where like Esmeralda has this moment of like that's actually pretty innovative. Like, he doesn't get disgusted by seeing this fighter uh, because there's a sense of whimsy to what he built. Um, and I don't think it's something he's intended, but it gets what like, came across when Esmeralda saw this. Like, this is something you've created with magic and your own. And it gave him and, a little sense of whimsy. And his character is so genuine, right? Like, every, yeah. time, he, every time he says something, I can't listen to his notes anymore because he's like... And definitely my best friend and longtime partner and comrade in arms, Quinn. The man who I'll share many years and many beers with, Quinn. And you're just like... <laughs> and I, it, it, I think I think Bisbo means it, which is so funny because like on the nose, he's like just so genuine. He's got these, 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 just these machines that he operates, you know, uh, and chaos. But like his character's super genuine and like that's just... That's just Eric, I think, a really, like, a really incredible kind of character creator. Like, he's just, yeah. he knew what he wanted to play yeah. personally before Second he knew class-wise. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, it, his story, yeah, it's beautiful. And I'm and, um, looking forward to how that pans out. You know, Bisbo's been a creature of disappointment and abandonment. And, you know, he's been isolated and has tried to make friends and belong his whole life. And so it's kind of like, it's, uh, it's yeah. He's, he's, he's got a lovely, a lovely touch to him. Didn't really love that. Well, I think we're rounding about the end of our our pre-programmed schedule here. What an incredible talk, <laughs> and you know, yeah. and, and 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 you know, spoiler alerts. It was pretty organic because like we had a couple things we want to talk about, but uh, just goes to show you, I think, when you've got passionate people, uh, a passionate game, uh, you know, you can have passionate conversations about them. So um, we play every Monday at uh i'm gonna say 8 p.m central um 9 p.m eastern and then james what is that you know 11 a.m tuesday <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't even use your times because no, i just cannot don't, just imagine don't they're helping yeah. anyone i cannot imagine they're helping anyone <laughs> Um, and of course we try to upload them to YouTube and of course as your resident guy trying to stream this nonsense uh, it is uh, a hit or miss and we're getting the quality better and better each time I think and so hopefully we'll have some stability in what we're recording and putting up I know there's a terrible echo in the last uh, episode um, so hopefully we can minimize that some but we're, we're working on it and we're having a great time yeah That's we're right. learning oh, it's we have the combat we'll be fine <laughs> 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 uh, we've got our incredibly uh, I, James I'll tell you what I'll let you do it you know run through our who we, our sponsors I think you know just really quick and like you know and kind of what you're doing at RPG at Home uh, uh, RPG at Home look we run games uh, all the time uh, RPG at Home.com come and join us for uh, a game of d, d or Call of Cthulhu anytime you like we've got heaps of games on the website and uh, let us know and you know, come and play one it'd be really really cool uh, we've got I wouldn't say sponsors, but we have to acknowledge Sirenscape, Cobalt exactly. Press, yes. uh, and Fantasy Grounds. Uh, for Fantasy Grounds Unity, they're the, they're the kind of three major sources that we're using for this campaign. I'm loving every bit of it. Um, you know, the Sirenscape soundtracks are great. Cobalt Press. Playing right now? The first campaign I've Hopefully. Had. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I hopefully it's playing right <laughs> now. I've got a clue half the time. <laughs> uh, the Cobalt Press stuff, I'm really, really enjoying. 
enjoy. Um, the, yeah. the monsters are just awesome. So um, yeah, I've, I've got to I've got to remind myself it is actually a fifth edition game and open up that monster manual at some point. But right now I'm going, no, I love these things. Let's just keep going with these crazy shit that no one's ever seen before. But uh, we'll see. We might have to get a goblin in there at some point. I love these very yeah. goblins. Those guys are assholes. I hate those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, anything you want to plug or mention? Um, no, um, I'm just hoping that we have more people to join us on Mondays as this is a wild ride and I have a feeling it's only going to get wilder from here. So it's going to be really fun. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you both so much for joining us for our third episode of Running Wild. TBD. I don't know. We're, we're still, we're still sussing out some name stuff, but I, I actually really like the Running Wild, but Running it's wild your yeah. one-stop shop for how to do Fey Wild stuff. Uh, you know, so you know, as you're getting ready for that new D&D book coming out, you know, if you want a little inspiration, come check us out and uh, we'd be happy to talk to you about it. And with that, I'm going to fade us to black here. Thank you both so much. Bye, everyone. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Can I do this without bringing down the whole stream? That's really the question that you guys have to ask yourselves. Here we go. Here we go. We're going <laughs> to transition. It's a big test. Can we leave Twitch or are we here forever? <laughs>